Welcome everyone to the Sunday Mass, a ministry of the Passionist community. And before we begin our Mass this week, I would just like to share with you some information about our online Mass. In recent years, uh, you have begun to experience, first of all, ads during the Mass, and then eventually over the last year, commercials interrupting the Mass. I know many of you have been frustrated with this, and so have we. And we've looked very hard to find a solution for this problem, and I think we found one. In December, we signed a contract with the Vimeo hosting service. Uh, and so beginning with our Christmas Mass, on our website, the Mass is hosted by Vimeo, which means there are no ads and no commercials. The Mass will still appear on the YouTube channel, but you'll have to deal with how YouTube presents the Mass. But if you would like to watch it uninterrupted, no commercials, no ads, all you have to do is go to our website, thesundaymass.org, and there you can watch it without commercials or ads uninterrupted. We hope this helps, uh, and we thank you for being part of the Sunday Mass faith community. Have a great celebration today and a great week. Welcome everyone to our celebration of the Sunday Mass and Ministry of the Passionist Community. It's April 21st, the fourth Sunday of Easter. Our celebrant today is Father Leonel. So if you're using a prayer guide, take it out, turn to the beginning of Mass, and let us begin our celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and the splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O oh God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, who with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before. 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely, by what means he was saved, then all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders which have become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. A stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. A stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Give praise to the Lord for he is good. His mercy endures forever. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us that we may be called the children of God, yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. We shall, what we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd, whose sheep are not his own, sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. The wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know mine, and mine know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, 
but I laid it down on my own. I have power to let it down and power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today, as we continue reflecting on the ways the new life of the risen Christ is experienced by us, Jesus calls himself the Good Shepherd. For St. John the Evangelist, Jesus is the model. In other words, using the original word, um, meaning good, means beautiful, exemplary. It's a beautiful and exemplary shepherd who gathers all together into one, giving his very life for his own. And how Jesus describes of his, this role make clear that having a shepherd like Jesus is like being a sheep raised for wool or meat. However, no matter how tenderly shepherds care for their flock, it is by nature a functional relationship. But having a good shepherd like ours is about being known and being loved. We are so loved that this, there is one willing to lay down his very life for us. Having a good shepherd is also about knowing the shepherd in turn. We may not always feel like we know Jesus, who often moves in subtle and mysterious ways. But we are promised that we have a home in him, a home in his heart. And whenever our hearts seal with the recognition that we are known and loved, we can be assured that Jesus is there. Yes, he is there for all of us for you and for you and for me and for everybody. As Pope Francis reflected several years ago about the ways the Lord knows us, he said, he is attentive to each one of us. He knows the depths of our heart. He knows our merits and our imperfections, the projects we have carried out and the hopes that have gone unfulfilled. But he accepts us as we are, even with our Sins guiding us with love. And we replicate this kind of shepherding not by actively seeking suffering, but by putting love at the center. God's love made visible in Jesus. Jesus' love made manifest in us. As we have been reflecting these weeks, it is a love that is freely chosen by an empowered self with a willingness to go to the depths of misery if necessary. And this requires not blind following, but intimate knowledge of the model shepherd and the free choice to continue his work of gathering all the different into one. Sheep are raised by shepherds either for wool or meat. They give of themselves, although unknowingly, to provide warmth and nourishment for others. And we, the sheep of our good shepherd, are also called to give of ourselves in order to provide shelter and nourishment for others, which is something very interesting for us as we celebrate also in this Sunday, the World Day of Prayer for Vocations in the Church. How to promote vocations that give, provide shelter and nourishment for others, especially those most in need. In this spirit, may each of us feels called and becomes shepherd to one another, to attend to each other, to encourage one another, to be ready to both lead and be there for one another through the simple gestures of life. Today is a good day then to ask ourselves, how does intimacy with Christ, the Good Shepherd, empower me to replicate his loving self-surrender for those who are his, whole, his own? Now, let us pray our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day, he rose again from the dead. 
he ascended into heaven, and he sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there we come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. My dear friends, as we continue this Easter journey, we pray that our Good Shepherd will hear our voices as we confidently place our prayers before Him. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who struggle in life, that they will come to know the voice, the call, and the everlasting love of the Good Shepherd, and trust that He always walks with them and will never leave them to face life alone. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that Jesus, the Good Shepherd, will watch over all who serve and protect us, especially healthcare workers, first responders. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the intentions of our benefactors, the intentions of our Sunday Mass faith community that will be placed next to the altar and for Mary Fanoc Marco, for whom we pray in a special way at this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, you gave us Jesus, the Good Shepherd, to care for, guide, and protect us. Hear and answer the prayers of all who place their hope and trust in you, through Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Sisters and brothers, and my sacrifice on yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy with Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud you more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is a sacrificial victim who, who dies no more, the Lamb who is slain, who lives forever. Therefore, energize with Easter joy every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Hosanna in 
are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, let the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new eternal covenant, which will be put out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate, the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together, we Francis our Pope Robert, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph and his spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who are pleased throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now with joy, let us pray in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Gracious grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and gracious on her peace and unity in accordance with your will, live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold, it takes away the sins of the world. Let's have those go to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter my into my room, or at least say the word, and my soul, soul shall, be shall be healed. My shepherd is the Lord, for nothing shall I. Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to set in internal pastures, the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. May, may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And go in peace. Thanks be to God. And thanks to all of you for joining us today for our celebration of the Sunday Mass. A special thanks to Father Lionel for taking some time out of his busy schedule to be with us today. He hasn't been with us for a while, so it's nice to have him back. Also, thanks to the ministry team for leading us and helping us to pray and to celebrate today. This Thursday is the Feast of St. Mark the Evangelist. So have a great week, everyone. And until we meet again next Sunday, may the passion of Jesus Christ be always in your heart.